So when it comes to bevel, of course, you know, compared to the default system of adding a bevel, you would go under add modifier, you would just add a bevel, you would choose how many segments, you would adjust your width a bit. Uh, it looks like I had a snapping mishap there. And we can go and set our miter to basically be arc for the um, sharp on the inner, but um, on the outer we have arc and then go ahead and shade smooth and from here go under normals and turn on auto smooth and that's basically what bevel does in a nutshell so the alternative is that you can press Q and just activate bevel and we could just put a bevel on the mesh and then if you want to reset the profile that's me always pressing one at the top of my keyboard it's just a religious thing I do to basically reset um, profile 2.5 but also to reset auto smooth after my profile has been set to 0.5 so you'll see that via the notification on screen but that's basically the um, width of bevel and object mode of course you can control shift click it to add a bevel at 60 degrees this may be changing in the future to be just a control behavior because that is a lot of hotkeys when you think about it and i'm not adding a lot of 30 degree bevels when you think about it so i'm just shift a adding a cube and because we have two bevels we can just perform a difference and this is you know the same workflow i've been showing throughout of basically stacking bevels non-destructively and working on multiple levels of course hit it with a weighted normal to fix that shading that's staring us right in the face but if we were to talk about the edit mode version we'll just bring in a new cube we'll alt g to reset its location then move it over and we'll start off in object mode right we'll put a bevel on it we'll give it 12 segments but let's go in edit mode we can select this edge and you know if you're new to hard ops you could just go to add modifier and you could just choose to add a bevel but if you've been following along basically control clicking mark will a lot well mark will mark and unmark an edge but control clicking mark will basically allow you to bevel so we see that while i'm beveling this it added a v group bevel as bevel number two so it's basically just destroying what we're looking at giving us a rather undesirable result we've all been there this is one of the 50 modeling issues from hell well when it comes to dealing with bevel it's just as easy as holding shift and just rolling your mouse up once in order to place the v group bevel before the angle bevel where we can then roll in additional segments and just take control of this area so even though we have a larger bevel happening inside of I mean on the mesh as a whole we also have the ability to hold control and just roll the wheel and jump and adjust the previous bevel so when it comes to using bevel uh, via our system it is a more focused way of dealing with bevel that's come from years of experience but it is something also that's approaching the point of a rewrite Bevel, formerly known as B-Width, has been around so long that it's one of the few tools that we never gave a dramatic rethought to. So, you know, most things we've sent through multiple V iterations, but Bevel is one of those things that I can't wait to update for the 2.9 generation. But the basic ideas will still stand, even what I'm showing now. So we're in edit mode. I have this edge system selected. We'll just control click mark. And once again, we have a disaster. So I will just hold shift, roll it up once. And now we actually have control of this area. And by rolling the wheel, we're able to set the profile to what we want it to be. And this is how you can just work in unison with bevel in object mode and edit mode to just set up different bevel levels, you know, based on different regions, depending on how you're modeling and, you know, move these things up and down the stack. You know, we'll take this, move it back down the stack. We see that, you know, homies still don't play that. And we could do the same thing with this thing, just roll it down the stack and we see that, you know, the modifier order is always going to be very important. I mean, we can get out of this by just clicking to stop and press Q and under operations use modifier scroll to really look at this because, you know, we have this first bevel that's on a vertex group. We have a second one that's also on a vertex group. Then finally we have this larger bevel that's on top. If we wanted to, we could actually control shift click to add another bevel that we will not be able to see because this bevel doesn't have any geometry to detect right now being fairly new and this being a fairly soft mesh so we'll just press x to drop it at half and by shift right clicking i can place my cursor here shift a add a cube i'm hoping that everyone's following along with me shift a adding cubes i figured it was the easiest way to convey some of these points and we'll just perform a basic difference and we see that 
you know, we're able to have this bevel isolated to this area. But the issue that we're looking at isn't one of the bevel, it's one of auto smooth. So if we press one, by changing the auto smooth on the fly, we can quickly just analyze what we're getting and just ensure that we're getting an auto smooth that's worthy of our result. Because once you begin to put a bevel on it, it does handle some of the tension that would normally be relieved by auto smooth. Whenever you have no bevels present, auto smooth is more than likely going to be your deciding factor as far as how good your shading is going to be. But when it comes to bevel, it has its own angle parameters that are essential towards ensuring that these sort of things are able to flow continuously. So continuing on, we will just select this and we'll alt click sharpen to just add a weight at normal. And now we have the shading looking good. And you know, based on the previous areas of the video that we've discussed, it should be apparent that I could just shift D duplicate this, move it here. And if we just control click difference, we will perform what's called a B step, which will bypass the whole adding a bevel and setting it up for us and just let us just add subsequent levels. But just keep in mind that this shape is a shape that's built up of vertex bevels and then angle bevels. And we're still working in conjunction with edit mode and object mode to keep basically everything in balance. If we have these bevels begin overshooting dramatically causing geometric issues, and then we try to up the ante by adding another bevel level. We'll see that this will basically add to the issues that are happening. And this is something that's a common pitfall that will happen with this type of workflow. So the easiest way to go about such things is to ensure that every level is basically adequately solved to the point that what you're adding is going to work out. And it's a bit of a mind game having to think this way, but this is how Blender has kind of laid things out for us. However, when it comes to solving this, in all honesty, I would go into Hops tool and then hold control and locate the second to last dot and just bring it in to lower that bevel level to something adequate. And now we actually have the desired result. I'll be going over Hops tool uh, in an exclusive area, but it is something that I do jump to from time to time and also use kind of as a support tool with this dot system to just manage things on the fly without having to press Q and go into additional options. So that's another way of looking at things.